So tonight, the NRA wants to block a new version of the Violence Against Women Act from becoming law. At issue is the, quote, boyfriend loophole, which would block people convicted of abusing or stalking a partner from owning guns. We're going to hear in a moment from the NRA's Dana Lash, but we begin with one of the authors of that provision, Congresswoman Debbie, Debbie Dingell of Michigan. Congresswoman Dingell, good to see you tonight. Um, why is it so important that this boyfriend loophole be included? You know, it, to me, it's very simple. It's not a poison pill, as the NRA is going to say. The fact of the matter is, it's closing a loophole. If there is a gun involved in a domestic violence situation, there is a five times more likely, or 500 percent more likely chance that somebody will be killed. And it's not, we are not taking away someone's due process. They have already been convicted. We are closing a loophole. And if you can save a life, shouldn't you? I would say absolutely. Um, but the, the issue that, as you say, they will bring up is that it's too broad, that it's overly broad and that someone could say something unkind about someone on Facebook. And their fear is that the next thing they know, um, they're being told that their guns are going to be taken away. Is that not true in your mind? So no, it's not true. First of all, you and I get a ton of Facebook comments every day. Mine may be worse than no, some no, of no. yours. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't know. They're pretty bad, but they're not convicted. They're not, they are not convicted of stalking somebody, of stalking you or I. You have to have been convicted if you're going to be. And there's a background check. What it allows is the FBI to do a background check. And if you're a threat to someone, if you've been stalking someone, then that is when they would take the gun away. I mean, the statistics are there about what the threat is of someone who has been stalked in the last year. The chance is 76 percent chance of your be uh, of if you are killed that you were stalked in the last year. So I'm just trying to use common sense here that if you can save a life, we should do it. And I've lived in that situation. I know what it's like to live in the home of someone who shouldn't have had a gun. And I lived. I'm not trying to take people's guns away. I lived with an NRA board member was in love with him for four years. There are people that should have guns and people that shouldn't have guns. I know this is very personal for you. Um, and you talk about hiding from your from your your own father, right? That, that is correct. There more than once there were guns in my house. The night I remember the most was when I kept my the, my parents from killing each other. My father pointed, to, tried to kill all of us. I got my brothers and sisters out of there. And then, you know, people said that someone should get a gun. Well, my mother went out and bought a gun. And I remember what it was like to live in that household and that constant fear. What would trigger it? This is just trying to use common sense. No child should have to live in that. But a woman who has been stalked by a dating partner, who has turned violent, who has been convicted, shouldn't have to live in fear fear that that person may kill them. All right, tell me about your confidence level with this, uh, with this closing this loophole legislatively. Well, I think it will pa pass the House tomorrow. I've talked to many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, and I'm going to keep fighting for it. I don't, I don't view the NRA as an enemy, as many people do, and I've tried to be very careful in this. I wish they didn't call this a poison pill, but why can't we just do some common sense things that will save lives yet protect the Second Amendment? Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, thank you very much. Good to have you here tonight. Thank you. So here to respond to that, Dana Lash, NRA national spokesperson. Dana, welcome. Good evening to you. Um, you heard what Congresswoman Dingell you, said, and as she pointed out herself, her husband was on the board of the NRA for many years. Um, she, you know, has been, you know, believes in the Second Amendment, but believes that this this would just simply make people safer. Right. And, and Martha, I, I appreciate you discussing this issue. And like the Congresswoman, I've been through domestic violence. It's part of my life story. I went through it as a child, mm -hmm. and I recounted a lot of that in my first book, Hands Off My Gun, before I ever came to even work with the NRA. But the reason that I support as a woman gun rights is because I went through that. I remember the day that my mom purchased a firearm. It was a 38, And I remember feeling safer as a result of having an empowered woman in my home who I knew could defend herself and me. Now, as for what the Congresswoman 
Chairwoman has said here regarding this law. What I don't understand are this provision in the Violence Against Women's Act. No one, the, the reason that the NRA or any of our members have, no one has ever said anything about the Violence Against Women's Act or even opposed it is because there's never been any gun control language in it. The problem with the, the quote unquote common sense that I keep hearing in, in, in regards to this is that no one's talking about the common sense efforts of following the laws that we have. There is no loophole. Martha, a criminal act is not a loophole. If you, for instance, say, or someone that you know, drives under the influence, has their license suspended, but yet continues to drive under the, or to drive and operate their vehicle against what had happened, having their license suspended, that's a criminal act. That's not a loophole. We have so many provisions within the legal system, within the justice system that deal with stalking. We have the Lautenberg Amendment, which talks specifically about intimate partners. So this idea that there isn't any recourse for this is simply false. And I say this as someone, Martha, I know you're in the same boat here because you do the show every evening. You see the stuff that said you get stuff sent to you. So I say this as someone who wants to make sure that I and many other women are protected. And Martha, there are millions of women out there who feel the exact same way, but they don't have these same platforms. Well, uh, I mean, I think that everybody listens to both of you um, and hears what you're saying. And you both have experience with this in your own homes, but have a very different take on what makes yeah. you feel safe. Um, and I think we have to respect both sides of that equation. But the, the Violence Against Women Act uh, covers currently those convicted of domestic abuse. They can lose their guns or uh, if they are yeah. or were formerly married to the victim, live with the victim or have a child with the victim or are a parent or guardian of the victim. And they're saying that they want to extend this for people who have been convicted of abuse if it is also someone that you've had a yeah. relationship with, but it's not a marriage, that it's a boyfriend, you know, a longer yeah. term. Because they cite the fact that abused women are five times more likely to be killed by their abuser if their abuser owns a firearm. Uh, and roughly three quarters of all intimate partner murder victims are also victims of stalking by their partners. What do you say to that? Hmm. Well, and Lautenberg Amendment specifically covered intimate partners, and in 18 Code uh, Section 922G gets into absolutely everything that would render someone ineligible to go out and purchase and or carry a firearm. If you're, you know, convicted of domestic abuse, if you are, you know, you're, you're a number of convictions, I mean, it lays it all out. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff is already legally covered, which is why I'm, I, when they say that there's a loophole, there isn't a loophole. I mean, it's already codified, yeah, and we can see you. it there in black and white. Mm -hmm. The thing that, uh, really quickly, though, Martha, if yep. I may, really one of the things that gets me, these are the same lawmakers that say they want to empower women, but yet they're working to diminish due process for men and women and working to disarm us. I wish they could get on the same page as our members and want to fast track concealed carry license applications for women who have survived domestic right. abuse situations, because so far these champions of women refuse to do that. All right. Dana Lash uh, and Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, both offering their opinions here tonight. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks, Dana.